1934, Harry Grindel Matthews lived and had a laboratory at Tor Clouth in Munnithir Gwaia, Craig Kevin Park, Clidder, Swansea. He was known to the locals as Dr. Death Ray. It is said the local people would see strange lights coming from the lavatory. There was even a private landing strip on his property. Local people said they saw his aircraft land and take off. When he was in the village, he wore an eye patch, long black coat and a trilby. Some people were said to be nervous of him. Harry Grindel Matthews was born on the 17th of March 1880 in Winterbourne, Gloucestershire. An English inventor who claimed to have invented a death ray machine in the 1920s. After studying at Merchant Ventures School in Bristol, he became an electronic engineer. During the Second Boer War, he served in the South African Constabulary and was twice wounded. On the 12th September 1911, Matthew said he had invented an aerophone device, a radio telephone, and transmitted messages between a ground station and an aeroplane from a distance of two miles. Flying from Ely Racecourse in Cardiff, C.B. Hux, who was in a Blackburn Mercury monoplane, received signals transmitted from the ground by Harry Grindel Matthews while flying at 85 miles per hour at 700 feet. His experiments attracted government attention, and on the 4th July 1912, he was commanded to demonstrate his wireless before King George V at Buckingham Palace. The British Admiralty had requested a demonstration of the aerophone, but Matthews demanded that no experts be present at the scene. When four of the observers dismantled part of the apparatus before the demonstration and began taking notes, Matthew cancelled the demonstration. Newspapers defended Matthews, and the War Office denied any tampering and claimed that the demonstration was a failure. The government later said that the whole affair was just a misunderstanding. After the outbreak of the First World War, the British government announced an award of £25,000 to anyone who could create a weapon against Zeppelins and remotely controlled unmanned vehicles. Matthews said that he had created a remote control system that used selenium cells. He successfully demonstrated it at a remotely controlled boat to the Admiralty at Richmond Park's Penn Pond. He received his £25,000, but the Admiralty never used the invention. In 1921, he was said to have invented the world's first talking picture. A farewell interview of Ernest Shackleton recorded on the 16th September 1921, shortly before Shackleton's last expedition. The film was not commercially successful. Although other talking picture processes had been developed before that of Harry Matthews, Matthews claimed that his process was the first sound on film process. In 1923, Matthews said that he had invented an electric ray that would put magnetos out of action. 1925 saw a photograph published purporting to show a night demonstration of the ray of Flat Home Island. In another demonstration to select journalists, he stopped a motorcycle engine from a distance. He also claimed that with enough power, he could shoot down aeroplanes, explode gunpowder, stop ships and incapacitate infantry from a distance of four miles. This short film, apparently made by Matthews and others, demonstrates a gunpowder experiment being carried out where the ray explodes the gunpowder. The War Office contacted Matthews in February 1924 to request a demonstration of his ray. Matthews did not reply to them, but spoke to journalists and demonstrated the ray to a star reporter by igniting gunpowder from a distance. He refused to say how the ray actually worked, but just said that it did. When the British government still refused to rush to buy his ideas, Matthews announced he had an offer from France. The Air Ministry was weary, partly because of previous bad experiences with would-be inventors. 
Matthews was invited back to London to demonstrate his ray on the 26th April to the armed forces. In Matthews' laboratory, they saw how his ray switched on a light bulb and cut off a motor. But he still failed to convince the officials, who also suspected trickery or a confidence game. When the British Admiralty requested further demonstrations, Matthew refused. On the 27th of May 1924, the High Court in London granted an injunction to Matthew's investors that stopped him from selling the rights to the death ray. When Major Wimpress arrived at Matthew's laboratory to negotiate a new deal, Matthews had already flown to Paris. Matthew's backers also appeared at the laboratory and then rushed to Croydon Airport to stop him, but they were too late. On the 28th May, Commander Kenworthy asked in the House of Commons what the government intended to do to stop Matthews from selling the ray to a foreign power. The Under Secretary for Air answered that Matthews was not willing to let them investigate the ray to their satisfaction. A government representative also stated that one ministry official had stood before the ray and survived. The newspapers supported Matthews. The government required that Matthews would use the ray to stop a petrol motorcycle engine in the conditions that would satisfy the Air Ministry. He would receive £1,000 and further consideration. Matthews, who was in France, said that he was not willing to give any proof of that kind and that he already had eight bids to choose from. Matthews stated that he had lost sight in his left eye because of his experiments. His involvement with the French backer Eugene Royer aroused further suspicions in Britain. Sir Samuel Instone and his brother Theodore offered Matthews a huge salary if he would keep the ray in Britain and demonstrate that it actually worked. Matthews refused. He did not want to give any proof that the ray worked as he claimed it would. Matthews returned to London on the 1st of June 1924 and gave an interview with the Sunday Express. He claimed that he had a deal with Royer. It was said the only demonstration Matthews was willing to give was to make a pathé film, The Death Ray, to propagate his ideas to his own satisfaction. The device in the movie apparently bore no resemblance to the one the government officials had seen. This is the eight minute film that was made.
In July 1924, Matthews left for the US to market his invention. When he was offered $25,000 to demonstrate his beam to the Radio World Fair at Madison Square Garden, he again refused and said that he was not permitted to demonstrate it outside England. US scientists were not impressed. One professor, Woods, offered to stand in front of the death ray device to demonstrate his disbelief. Harry Grindel Matthews was interviewed by the Brooklyn Daily Eagle and in that interview his ray machine is referred to as a death ray and Matthews said he was not in America to raise money and that so-called death ray is not for sale. It will go to England. I never gave it that name. It's a powerful electric ray. When Matthews returned to Britain, he alleged that the USA had bought his ray but refused to say who had done it and for how much. Matthews then moved to the US and began to work for Warner Brothers. In 1925, he invented what he called the Luminophone, which produced music by beams of light played from a keyboard. On the 24th December 1930, Matthews was back in England and with his new creation a sky projector that projected pictures onto clouds. He demonstrated it in Hampstead by projecting an angel, the message, Happy Christmas, and a reportedly accurate clock face. He demonstrated it again in New York. This invention was not successful either, and by 1931, he faced bankruptcy. He had allegedly used most of his investors' money for living in expensive hotels. In 1934, Matthews had a new set of investors and relocated to Torclouth, Betus, South Wales. He built a fortified laboratory with his own airfield. In 1935, he claimed that he worked on aerial mines and that in 1937, he had invented a system for detecting submarines. Also in 1935, he became involved with the right-wing Lucy, Lady Houston, and intended to carry out experiments in French naval submarine detection from her luxury yacht, the Liberty. Later, he propagated the idea of the Strasso plane and joined the British Interplanetary Society. His reputation preceded him, and the British government was no longer interested in his ideas. In 1938, Harry Grindel Matthews married a Polish-American opera singer, performer and feminist Ganna Walska. He was her fifth husband and whose four previous husbands had owned fortunes totaling $125 million. Harry Grindel Matthews died of a heart attack on the 11th of September 1941. His funeral was attended by seven people. He was cremated in Pontypridd and his ashes were spread on the mountain near his laboratory. Other inventions said to be attributed to Harry Grindel Matthews were an autopilot for aeroplanes and automatic street lamps that came on at dusk.